Th this would just uh, take one, no, just a couple sure, of seconds. Of course. Yeah, we, we're, we're going to go to another level of qu uh, questioning, but please proceed. If I could just show, this is the, uh, a model of the brain that shows the amount of absorption into the brain of an adult. It only goes about two inches into the brain. This is a model of the same part of the brain near the ear of a five-year-old child. This goes pretty far into the brain, and I think uh, that's something that the FCC should consider to talk about the amount of absorption into the brains of children as opposed to adults. Uh, could staff bring could staff bring that model up here for a minute? Can we get pictures of that? Is there any way to yeah. get I saw some pictures. Would, would staff uh, bring the model up here? I just want to take a look at it. Um, the general lady's time has expired on, on this round. Uh, we're going to come back. Uh, we're going to take another round here. Uh, let, let me just make an inquiry. I, I don't know whether it's possible, but uh, could, is there any way with our copying devices to make copies of that so we can take those with us? Don't drop it. Uh, actually, within my written testimony, we have a photograph uh, showing okay, the Okay, I, I just thing. want to, just for the record uh, here, uh, this, uh, this model, uh, Dr. Herberman, uh, is you know, an adult brain model, is that what you're saying? That's correct. And then where, uh, where does the, on this model, where's the uh, cell phone? Uh, the thing sticking out on the side is supposed, the cardboard thing is The cell phone is right here. Right there. Okay, so the cell phone is here, and the, what you're saying is that, uh, and this actually, you know, so we're trying to keep this uh, close to the model. The cell phone is here, and you're saying that the uh, directed energy from that cell phone goes in like this and then expands outward into, into, the, into the tissue of the brain. Yeah, and this now, shows the So in just turning it uh, in another view, uh, that's what an adult brain... What's your basis for that? Uh, are there, uh, there studies that prove this? Is that what you're saying? This was done uh, with uh, models in which uh, radio frequency signals that are uh, in the same uh, range as uh, uh, the commonly used cell phones Can, were okay, used now, for this. Now, this would be a model of a child's brain at what age? Five years old. Five-year-old child. Uh, fi do you have research that shows, or uh, public health uh, research, uh, Dr. Carpenter, that five-year-old children will use a cell phone? Is that possible? I've had inquiries from parents of two-year-old children who give them their child the on cell phone to play with. Uh, I don't think most five-year-olds are making phone calls, but when kids get in elementary school, okay, then so, they begin. So, okay, now here we've seen, you know, we've seen the effect. Here's the uh, adult uh, brain effect of use of the cell phone. And then we look at the child again. Um, so the cell phone is here, is that right? Correct. Cell phone's here, and it's a very deep penetration, you're saying. Now, is this kind of penetration of the energy of a cell phone, the radio frequencies, radiation, we're saying, um, would you say that from, from looking at this visually, is it your testimony that most of the brain of a child would be, uh, would receive uh, s some of this energy? That's correct. Most of the brain, at least on that side of the head, uh, would be uh, absorbing uh, that energy. And it's a simple explanation for it. Uh, one is that the skull is considerably thinner in a, in a child, and it doesn't uh, reach maturity until uh, the 20s. In addition to that, the nerves in the brain uh, in an adult are, uh, are protected by a myelin sheath. In uh, children, the myelin uh, has not fully developed, so there's several reasons for the increased absorption in a child. Well, let's, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, children here. Uh, you're saying that children are more vulnerable, just no question about it. I mean, the, the, you presented models here which demonstrate that. You say there's research that back that up. And uh, 
when you and we this is a f model of a five year old now our children ten years old vulnerable this was actually done as part of the same modeling experiment and as uh, you might guess uh, the uh, model of the brain of a 10 year old is somewhere in between that of a five year old and an adult children are they 15 children 15 years old there's two we're talking teenagers here. are the young teenagers do they have a vulnerability is it your testimony they have a vulnerability I believe they still are more vulnerable than adults. You believe or you know, Dr. Of the myelin. Doctor, you believe or you know? What, what uh, do you this has not been uh, directly studied, but I think uh, from other biologic information, I know that there is not as much myelin protection to a teenager as there is for an adult. Uh, one of the things that, that occurs to me, and my colleagues I think would probably support this, it is customary in our society to look at various products or substances and say that children should not be uh, permitted to have access to them or to use them. For example, states have passed laws that uh, restrict children from being able to purchase cigarettes. States have laws that restrict children from being able to purchase alcohol. Uh, we even have uh, national standards that restrict children's access to being able to watch certain types of movies. Um, should there be, uh, in, and I'd like to have a response from uh, uh, the doctors who are here, is it, is it your judgment that as a precautionary measure uh, there should be uh, national standards uh, of either warning or precaution of, uh, uh, of relating to the use of cell phones uh, for children ages um, uh, of any age. Uh, Dr. Carpenter.